in the direction of low precipitation, well, it's the whole South African fringe of the distribution. So maybe that makes sense. Maybe that South African species is existing under drier conditions than the rest, than the other two species, and one up here. So that's not really awakening any big doubts in me. Let's look at the other end. So these are the very wet areas. That's probably okay. You know, maybe, maybe I need to consult some sources about that. But let's look at that hottest part and see we have a record on the coast in East Africa. And it looks like none of the rest of the records get down to the coast. And there's that same Sudan Zaire DRC record. Okay? So now I've got three sources of evidence that say I do not like that record. And a, one or two sources that say I don't like that record. So you see, all I'm doing is playing around with different sources of information and flagging certain records as, ooh, there's got to be something wrong with that. Or that's just the extreme of the temperature tolerance of the species. That also can be true. But we really want to get more information about those sites and make sure the species is there. OK, last example. Alex, this is for you. Uh, Alex gave me a copy of the University of Ghana herbarium data set. Um, essentially, the, the data associated with the specimens we saw last week. Um, and I spent the last couple of days basically just playing with the data. OK, this is the first few steps. And really, I only looked at the geographic dimensions of the data set. And to my eye, this is really positive. Because what it does is it gives you a first view of how those, how those data look across Ghana. And it's a pretty cool data set at the end of the day. So let's look at it. All in all, the data set had 65,534 records. And about half of those had latitude and longitude coordinates. Okay? So right away, I'm only going to look at this portion. And one thing you can think about, and I'll talk about this some um, tomorrow as well, is you can think about the leakage in your data. If you're setting out to get the maximum amount of information about the plants of Ghana, you can think of all the different leaks where you lose information. You know, one of them is maybe that there are another 20,000 specimens sitting in Kew Gardens, not digitized. Another is that we have 32,000 records sitting right here in the university that have not been georeferenced. So that's a very easy way to almost double the size of our data set that can be mapped. Okay? Um, so I did a few initial playing around, steps playing around with, with fixing up uh, hemispheres. Now I'll, I'll show you what I was doing. Uh, this is in Excel. I know, John, Excel is terrible, but it's also useful. Um, so this is the north-south hemisphere column. And in that, we had values of 0, 1, 2, 3. I think that's B, E, K, north and south and W. Okay? So right away, you can see that when those data were captured, if there had been a pick list, you know, N, S, or unknown, or something like that, then this would have been much simpler. And in the east-west hemisphere column, we get east, north, south, and west. So clearly we've got some problems with the people who are doing the data capture getting confused as to which hemisphere they were talking about or getting confused as to what values should go in that, in that field. So well, what I did was I, I trimmed it down to just the ones that were east-west here or north-south there. Okay, so there's another leak. And maybe we could go back to the labels of those ones that have 
you know, northern hemisphere in the east-west column, check those coordinates, and boom, we add one record to our data set. So all of these problems are leaks in our data set. Okay, they're leaks of information. Just like if you have a, a pipe carrying water, if there's a big hole in it, that's water that doesn't get to your house. Right? So here's my first view. I made a quick assumption about uh, the latitude longitude columns and I plotted it out. And this is about what you expect. It's pretty common. You can see most of the points are down there in Ghana. And then there are clearly a few typographical errors in the longitude field and a few typical, ty typographical errors in the latitude field. That's common. Let's go in closer. Now right away, this is, this is all of Sub-Saharan Africa, right away I knew I had a problem. And in fact, there is a close-up of Ghana. So it looks like, in this first iteration, it looks like uh, the University of Ghana, for some reason, only sampled the eastern hemisphere half of, or part of Ghana. Probably not true. Now in this case, the mistake is mine, okay? This is a fun one. Anybody got an idea of what I did wrong? Now, you already know. Think about degrees and minutes. What are the possible values of minutes? In degrees, minutes, and seconds, how many minutes are there in a degree? 60. 60. So do you ever have, you know, 5 degrees, 70 minutes? No. And no, notice this, that we go from one value, and then there's this break here, and we get to another value. And notice that that's about 60% of the whole distance. That's the secret to figuring out what I'd done wrong. And I'll make it a little bit more obvious for you. Here are the values. That looks like 9.15, right? And that looks like 1.51. But on my second time through the, the data set, I realized that this said it's latitude, longitude, unit. And I thought, ah, degrees, minutes. These, I thought they were decimal degrees. So I took that as 9 and 15 one hundredths. But if this is degree and this is minutes, then it actually should be 9 and 25 one hundredths. Right? 15 divided by 60. And so right away you see, oh, okay, this is the, the integer degree. This is going up. There's 30 minutes. There's 60 minutes. And then there are no values between 60 minutes and 100 minutes. So I, it was just a silly mistake of mine. But it was complicated by the fact that the delimiter between degrees and minutes was a period, which is interpreted as a decimal. And in fact, Excel is particularly bad about how it interprets those decimals. And so that took me most of Saturday and into Sunday morning to fix. Um, and when I fix it, I go from this to that. Okay, that looks a little bit better, doesn't it? But essentially what I had to do was rescale these to go instead of from zero, 0 to 60 to go from 0 to 100. I treated minutes as minutes out of 60. In this one, I was treating it as minutes out of 100. Stupid mistake of mine. So now, here's what we have. And my first impression is excellent, right? We've got denser coverage in the south, but we've got very nice coverage all the way up to the northern border. So right away, you're thinking, wow, Alex, nice collection, right? Let's keep going. And, and that conclusion still holds. That's a really neat data set. Um, 
we still have those outliers, even after I fix the problems, uh, the initial problems. Some of those outliers are true, like there is a data point there, and its locality is in Alaska. Okay, so that's true. I'm sure it came on trade or something like that. Let's go in a bit, and we see kind of collections across West Africa and some dots in, in Ethiopia. And then there's also this big concentration out in the, in the Gulf of Guinea. Anybody knows what that is probably related to? What is that point? Say it? Somebody said it, but I didn't hear it. What is the longitude and latitude of that point, more or less? John was very excited because he decided that he had just swum yesterday at the closest beach to zero, zero in longitude, latitude. So frequently, we were talking about yesterday how there must be some vortex of biodiversity out there in the middle of the Gulf of Guinea. You know, lions and tigers and, and polar bears. Why? Because sometimes we put zero, zero as a marker for no data. I don't know the latitude, longitude, so I'm going to put zero, zero. Well, that just enriches the biodiversity of the Gulf of Guinea, <laughs> right? What I'm guessing this little cloud of points is, is where somebody put, by accident, zero in the latitude column or some low number in the latitude, number, lati latitude column and some number in the longitude column. So in fact, watch a little bit later in this talk and you will very commonly see in biodiversity data sets a big cross, just like this. And those are things that had maybe the correct longitude, but a zero for latitude, or the correct latitude and a zero for longitude. So that's a symptom that you can always spot. I'll show it to you later on. But let's, let's go in closer. And what I did was to put a different symbol for every country in the data set. And so you can see the symbols, like Benin are these purple triangles. And okay, that one's good. That one's a problem. Um, Sierra Leone, those red stars. I see one problem over here. Okay? But the really nice thing is, is most of the time those red stars are in Sierra Leone and these black crosses are in Ghana and these yellow stars are in Cameroon. So there's a lot of consistency in here. But right away we can see some, some problems that we can probably fix. Or at least signal. Let's, we can do this at a different level. Let's go into Ghana and do it at the level of, what are they called, districts? Major, Major districts. Okay, so I took a map of the major districts of Ghana, and then I took the data set and I put a different symbol for each uh, district designator. And what you can see is like these greater than signs almost always fall all in this region, but here's an exception. Okay? Now I kind of looked at this with John and we decided that maybe the worst of them was the Volta region, which has these white stars. Because look, those white stars